the wicked shall cease from troubling the weary shall be at rest all of the saints of the ages will sit at his feet and be blessed and i'm going where the wicked shall cease from troubling the weary shall be it's me jermaine and i hope that you all had a great week this past uh week as we approach the start of the new year there are certain things and uh, changes that are beginning to happen e even as i speak um, and that is not just reflective of me personally but for the whole body of christ there are certain things um, as we approach the new year um, in, in two weeks certain things that um that call for attention um one of those main things uh is going to be found in today's scripture having to do with um being a christian and being employed right um but in this particular since most people unless you have your own business is one thing uh, but certainly this, this message is going to apply to those who, for the most part, um, are amongst the majority of Americans who are employed, um, by an employer. Um, what led me to this particular discussion, um, is having to counsel several of my own, uh, colleagues, um, regarding uh tribulation and change and opportunity within uh, employment and there is a word from god on today concerning this because this is i i noticed that i was um requested uh three times to talk about this um from uh, from my colleagues. So let's get directly to it. Um, the word of God today comes from Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 22 through 24, and it reads thus so. Slaves, obey your earthly masters and everything, not only to please them while they are watching, but with the sincerity of heart and fear of the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with your whole being for the Lord and not for men, because you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Now, there has been many controversy over the verse 22, slaves obey your earthly masters. But, and I've heard even in the, and, and many of you have heard this used by uh, white supremacists or racist, uh, even in the slave era um, in, in America, that this scripture was used to attempt to, and I say attempt to control the slaves. However, we know from history that the slaves did not grasp the inter interpretation of the racist oppressors, the slave masters. No, but the slaves use the word to shift and move them, right, in song and in code up to the north. You see, God had a different interpretation and they followed the voice of the Lord. Okay, so that's dealing with slavery. I digress. I just want to give a little context on that. But today, right, think about today and think about slave and master. There is... We are em em employed, so there's the employers and the employees, right? There is the um, 
there is the superior and then there is the um, subordinate. So there's no slave and earthly master. And really thinking about Colossians, right? Why this is taken out of context and why it may rub people the wrong way is because you're thinking about it from the wrong way. You have to take in to consideration the context to which the scripture is in, right? So we're dealing with the Colossians. We're dealing with um, many thousands of, of years ago. We're dealing with centuries ago. And in the Greco-Roman era, right, there were uh, slaves uh, and there were uh, slave masters right so with that being said um that was the order of the day there was the rich and then there were the poor and those poor um were the slaves right so they did everything that they possibly could in order to survive it wasn't the type of slavery that we know here in the united states of america not that type of slavery um, that slavery is the most horrific and malignant um, because it was cattle slavery. But I want us to really think about this. So that was in this context, right? So you can't take, you know, the social order of that day as far as slave and masters and juxtaposed it with today. So today we are, there is no slaves so, um, and as I mentioned before, you have the employer and the employees, the boss and the subordinates. So let's read this in a different type of context of today. So employees or subordinates obey your earthly mass or your earthly bosses or, or superiors and everything, not only to please them, while they're watching, but with the sincerity of heart and fear of the Lord. You see how that has a different meaning? Because this this scripture has now been put in the 21st, 21st century context. Now, the reason why I uplift this scripture, and whatever you do, work at it with your whole being for the for for the Lord and not for men, because you know that you will receive your inheritance from the Lord as your reward. And it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Colossians deals with the supremacy of Christ, right? Um, in the book of Colossians, um, Paul, the supposed writer, is letting the Colossians know that the things that are going on, the earthy realm to which they're in, and um, the activities and the day to act, the day to day act, the day to day activities um, to which they find themselves in um, are are basically worldly and they are earthly, and that Christ reigns over all. Christ is superior over all, and to not forget the purpose to which you have been called and what it means to be a Christian in the context of a world that is uh, that has rejected Christ, a world that is um, it, that is anti Christ. Right. So the whole mission. Why do I bring all of that? The whole mission of the believers because as believers we are disciples and as his disciples our aim is to share the good news of jesus christ now many christians on the workplace this past week i've heard so many um in my particular department promotions were granted and i had several colleagues who who voiced uh, to me uh, how unfair um, it is that certain people get certain privilege or promotions over and opportunities over people who are constantly trying or, 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 and, and who are putting forth strong efforts and being diligent and trying to do everything that they possibly can to be recognized and to be promoted and to do, to get a job well done. Now, 
I want you to know definitely if you didn't watch last week's message to go back and tune back into that because in that message I talked about how there are evil forces and principalities and powers that are at place. I talked about how politics, who gets what, where and how is the order is 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 uh, authorized and um, and governed by these people who are wicked and 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 principality. Uh, I also want to share with you that when um, my employer gave me the opportunity, you know, as I'm exiting, this is my last few weeks. My employer gave me the opportunity to do an exit interview. And I prayed before that exit interview, but I asked the Lord for me to be a beacon of truth, to allow me to share everything in my possible experience, um, most of it bad, um, with, with uh, working in this department. So many people suffer as a result of being in um, this employer employee type of relationship um, and as i had mentioned last week it's not about a particular employer this is just the way that the world works and that's why we have the scripture that i just lifted right because what and when whatever you do you must do it with your whole being and my message to you is, I know that you've worked hard. I know that you've put in the, the time. I know that you've stayed overtime. I know that you haven't called in sick. I've known that you, I know that you have shown leadership and volunteered for different things and opportunities. And I know that you have, um, you have put in great amount of stress into your job, right? You have been diligent. You have been ethical. You have done the right thing when no one was looking. While everybody else was taken off and calling in sick and things of that nature, you did your job. But I want you to know, because one of my colleagues said this to me, oh, I think that God is punishing me. No, God is not punishing you. God does not punish those who follow his word. And if you're the one who are who bring to work all of those qualities that I had just mentioned, guess what? Even if you don't get that opportunity, even if you don't get the promotion, even if you don't get recognized, even if you get blackballed, your light shines right and that's why the enemy hates you that's why they don't give you the opportunity because you do your job well while others do their job to take people down to lord over people to spy and start lies and gossip over other people. That's how these kind of folks, they get their promotions, right? They get it because of darkness. They get it because they scratch the the manager or supervisor's back or whoever else in order to get their rewards. Meanwhile, we as Christians are obligated not to brown nosing, but to being the light of Christ, being the uh, representation of Christ in a dark and antichrist world. So with that being said, take cheer and know that your agenda is not the same as those who walk in darkness. Your agenda is not that of your boss's agenda. Make no mistake. You must do your work and you must do it well. So continue on with doing a job well done. But guess what? The whole theme of this verse is to realize that Christ is in control. Christ is superior. It is Christ who you are employed by, right? These folk, they think that they gave you a job. 
they think that they gave you an opportunity, please. It was the Lord's doing. As Pontius Pilate, remember I shared this last week, as Pontius Pilate came be as summoned Jesus and said to Jesus that I have power to release you. Here, Pontius Pilate, Governor Pontius Pilate, this Roman, right, is before the Messiah, the Savior, God himself in the flesh, superior, right? And Pontius Pilate has the nerve to say something like that. I have power. Christ tells that Pontius Pilate Roman prick that you have no power to which it has not been given to you. Your power comes from me ultimately is what he is saying. And that is the same message that you must possess within yourself. So know that your good deeds and your good work, your virtues are being honored and respected by the Lord. And I guarantee you that if you continue to work unto the Lord, as you work unto your employer, that God will take care of you in his own possible way, right? That you won't want for nothing. You won't want for where you want to live. You won't want for the car that you want to drive. You won't want for food and clothing and basic necessities of life because God will give it to you, right? There are some people that have all of this stuff, right? That the devil gives gifts and they, and then, then but the devil takes their soul. That's the difference between those who get the opportunities and those who do well in this employee, employee, employment, uh, employee, employer environment, right? Those who get the opportunities, right? Because they serve, um, they serve darkness. But one of the things that the devil gives gifts, but he always has a means to take your soul as a result of it. But you keep working for God, knowing that God will give you his gifts. He'll give you that reward. He'll give you that inheritance. And guess what? You keep your soul in the process. And not only do you keep your soul, but the mission, you keep God's mission in your heart. And that's reconciling other people to God. So yes, and it, it is painful. It is suffering. And yes, there are times of depression as, as a result of it. There are times of tears as a result. There's a time of frustration and anger. But know this, God is superior and God is in control. And it will be God who these folk, right? Who the devil and the darkness and the demons will have to utterly bow and and reap the consequences of their action because God, he takes care of his own. And if it comes to a point that you lose this position because of your faith, know that God will open a better door, a better way, and put you with people who are like-minded, who will give you the opportunity. He will give you the abundance of what God has purposed you for. Don't limit yourself based upon what these people in darkness won't give you as a result of having to forfeit your soul. God bless you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.